XML Reader and XML Writer, those are the two classes that you'll need in order to create and load XML data files to and from your .NET programs. And in this lesson, I'll explain how to do that. If you've been following my series on programming an application launchpad in C-sharp, you'll already have seen me save two different types of configuration file. When saving the application configuration, such as the size and position of this window, I created a configuration file of key value pairs. This configuration file was saved in XML format. When saving paths to the files represented by the buttons on my launchpad, I created plain text files. The paths associated with the buttons were saved into a text file with one path per line. Then when I wanted to recreate those buttons, I loaded those paths one line at a time. Now, in the new version of my launchpad, I want to save two distinctly different types of path. As before, I want to save the paths to the documents, programs and folders associated with the buttons. But now I've added a second tabbed page. On this second page, I have a list of web addresses. These are URLs that I've simply dragged out of a web browser and onto the list view, as I explained in the last lesson in this series. Just in case you haven't watched my other lessons, let me quickly show you what my program does. I can drag programs, documents and directories from the Windows File Explorer, and when I drop them here, my program creates a button for each of them. In the other page, I can drag URLs from a web browser and it adds each URL to a list. When I want to launch a URL in a web browser, I double click it. And when I want to launch a program or document from my hard disk, I click one of the buttons. So now I need to save both a list of paths to disk files and also a list of URLs to web pages. This means that I need to be able to tell which is which so that I know how to load them when I reconstruct the file launching buttons and the list of URLs. Instead of saving this data into a text file, I've decided it would be better to save the data into a more structured document, such as XML. Now, when I saved the XML application configuration, I used the Configuration Manager class, which makes pretty light work of this. But that class isn't the one I need when writing my own custom type of XML. For that, I need to use XML Writer and XML Reader. The problem with those classes is that they're quite complicated. Look at Microsoft's documentation. There's far, far more here than I need for my requirements. At first sight, it looks completely baffling. I only need very, very little of all this. Before I show you my code, let me explain what's in this file. This is one of the XML files that my program has saved. The syntax of XML files is quite strict. It has to begin with a tag like this showing that it is XML. Then everything else has to be contained between pairs of tags. Here I put the path to each disk file between a pair of file path tags, and a whole group of these are placed between a pair of file paths in the plural tags. The URLs are stored in a similar way. I have multiple URL paths delimited by this pair of tags, with each URL path delimited by its own pair of tags, and then the whole lot, the file paths and the URL paths, are placed between this other pair of tags, all paths. If you get this wrong, if, for example, you end up by trying to write an opening tag but forget to write a closing tag, or if you write two path groups such as file paths and URL paths but forget to put them inside a pair of tags such as all paths, well, you'll get an error. The error messages are not always very explanatory, so you need to watch out carefully and make sure that everything is enclosed by pairs of tags. OK, now let's see my code. First, I create an XML writer. I've put it in this using section as the using statement which is recommended for disposable objects such as this XML writer is what I need. I then write the XML header with write start document and after that I write the all paths tag and inside this I put the file paths tag and these two opening tags are written by the write start element method. Then I iterate over the controls on my form getting the paths which, as I explained in earlier lessons, are stored in the controls tag property. For each path, I write a complete element, that is both an opening tag and a closing tag, 
with the tag label being file path and the stored value between the pairs of tags being the actual path itself. When I've written all the file paths, I write an end element to close the last unclosed tag. Here, that's this file paths tag. Then I have this URL paths tag and I iterate over the paths in the list view. Each path, each URL is written between a pair of URL path tags. Then I close the URL paths tag with right end element. So what's this second right end element? That closes the all paths tag, which I wrote up here. Now, when I load this data from this saved XML file, I use an XML reader object. I read through it inside the while loop. I examine the start elements here, and I can test the element or tag names in this switch case statement here. I'm only interested in two tags, file path and URL path. If one of those is matched, I read the string saved between the relevant tags and add it either to a list of file paths or to a list of URL paths. When I've done all that, I recreate my buttons here, one button per file, and I repopulate the list here, one URL per line, and that's it. So, as I said, this is really a very, very simple example of using XML Writer and XML Reader. It's the sort of thing you might want to use if you need to save categorized data of some sort, as I do here, since I want to save two types of data, disk paths and web addresses, in a single data file. Finally, I just scroll down my code now so you can see everything I've written. If you just want to check some specific bit of code, pause the video while I'm scrolling. This is the full code of my file and URL launchpad application. If you can't figure it out, bear in mind that I have a whole series of videos explaining it all. The playlist is down below. As I've said before, please also bear in mind that this code is intended only as an example to show certain techniques. In a real-world program, you would need to add far more error checking and recovery and you would probably also want to structure your program more thoroughly, maybe dividing it up into several different files and classes. But anyway, my code should, I hope, give you the foundations on which to build. If you liked this lesson, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified whenever I upload new lessons.